everybody. Welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. And uh, once again, we're doing something a little bit different. <laughs> uh, I finally finished this uh, skin combo. You know, the truck was difficult enough doing the stripes around the fenders and stuff and meeting them up with the body, but man, the trailer was something else. As the, uh, the little stripes, especially at the back of the trailer, um, the small stripes where they go across the back of the trailer they look straight now but they sure don't on the drawing and on this side it was really bad uh, what I'll do is I'll insert a little uh, image here of what the actual stripes are like on the, I drew on the template they go all over the place to get them to go straight on the truck so just one of the things you got to do I guess to get a skin done but anyway we're at the um, racetrack in Houston just picked up a, a race car here. We're taking it up to the Antonov in Fort Worth. And uh, yeah, so this racetrack is really fun, by the way. Uh, it's a good time. I'd like to do a convoy session in here, do some racing. It'd be fun. But uh, anyway, we better hop in the truck and get going because got to get this thing delivered. And uh, you can see where kind of operating it's night so while well, it's not late it's uh 8 30 something like that it's um oh maybe a little later nine maybe but uh that's what happens you get all loaded up and race is over and you drive through the night but uh yeah should be should be a good time so let's see what else we got to do here i think that's it This is all hidden roads. I'll go up the tunnel here. I've been through the tunnel a whole bunch of times at Daytona. For went to a couple of years in a row to Bike Week. We used to take the motor home under the tunnel and out the other side park at the uh what was it called the uh indianapolis horseshoe or whatever it was really good spot you got to get there early you got to like sleep out out in front so anyway don't have very much truck volume on here. I should uh, take a minute turn the engine volume up a bit. Just give me a sec. Oh, I hope I don't have it too loud now. <laughs> Find out. So this hauler, so I've got a little bit of a problem. i got to figure it out. Um, uh, the one from Steam, so I have a skin that works on the one from Steam. I have a skin that's sort of in the works for the modified one that I drove the other night. And this skin is for a version that I guess Bart's name is on as well. And I got it from Polly, <coughs> from Polly Custom Skins. And... Um, so, and it's a different skin because it has a different XML, but I can use the same, you know, if I rename the DDS, I can, you know, I have both trucks in this profile, or both trailers, and the different skins, and, you know, I can drive either one. But the other one isn't getting a, uh, oh shoot, I don't have a GPS. Okay, we have to pay attention to Lori. <laughs> Darn. We're going to Fort Worth to the airport, so that should be easy enough. Keep left. After 50 yards, exit left ahead. Exit left ahead. Kind of want to see what this thing looks like in the, uh, I haven't driven it at night before. How's the gold look? 
Oops. Pretty good. Well, I guess I could stay in this lane till I hear otherwise. Right. Yeah, we don't want to go to San Antonio, so this must be right. I'm going to pause again. I'm going to set that light distance because I've got the frame rates turned down. One second, I got to. Uh, oh shoot, we're driving. After 50 yards, exit right ahead. Okay, I'm going to just pause right here. Right ahead. Okay, so that shouldn't affect my frame rates at all because uh, I got. Uh, so what I did is I just changed the distance that the game draws the lights at. I don't see anybody coming there. Hope not. Oh, that guy, didn't see him. Keep left. After 50 yards, turn left. Oh boy. I don't think she wants me, doesn't want me to do a U-turn. Like this is what we want here. Those U-turn lanes, like that right there, they'll catch you out. Like that fire truck's going around. He's just doing a U-turn. So you gotta be careful of those here in Texas. So the weight on the load isn't very much. This kind of makes more sense than that, la that last load. Oh shoot, I was supposed to turn left there. What am I doing? Oh man. Oh, that bites. What can I do with that? I think I'm going to just gonna go over this nice uh, interlocking brick here. I'm sleeping at the switch thinking about other things. Oh, I'll let that guy go. late at night. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the police are all home in bed. That wasn't too brilliant. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, oh yeah, the weight of the load. Yeah, 16,741. That sounds more like a race car and some parts than 40 some odd thousand we had the other day with the modded trailer and the hot rod. He had that 32 Ford in there. So, this is a little more realistic. And we're not going to uh, Amazon with it. We're going to load it on an airplane, which is not totally unrealistic. Light route. Sooner or later, we're going to see what the high beam lights are like on this thing. Go straight. Uh, 3406 again. Mm -hmm. 
So I did a little digging around and uh, the, uh, the uh, LTL in the, in the picture that I uh, based this off, uh, the, the, the team picture, was a, a 1989 LTL, Exit right ahead. and I'm guessing you know they're pretty. They would they wouldn't be driving around and old stuff. So not when they're sponsored by Ford. Crap. Keep left. Afraid we're gonna have to go right there, Lori. Oh, great headlights. You can even see a little bit on the side there. That's amazing. That's good. You're looking for headlights that do that. on still. Well, let's see what we got here. 49,091 pounds. Yeah. Not much. The gold looks okay in the under light. Nice thing about this trailer compared to the other one I drove in the last video, the modified trailer, is the uh, truck and trailer both have the same color of gold. So you don't need to have two different batches of paint. Uh, that's a relief. Oops, I want to get right in the light. See if we, oh, we're out of lights now. Darn. Well, we'll get another chance. Get a, looks pretty good in the, uh, really happy with this uh, gold that I finally sorted out. Yeah, like I mentioned in the other video with this truck that uh, the gold you, uh, you uh, can put on at paint.net looks terrible but uh, you know that's one thing the game has you know I'm always a little hard on it for graphics quality and stuff like that but the paint in the paint shop is pretty good Ooh, I guess I better stay straight here I must have like uh, 336s or something in here. Do 
fifteen hundred and fifty RPM at eighty. I think maybe three twenty five, so I don't know. It's one thing I hate about driving at night uh, across the country is, you know, going distances. Anyway, I did hot shots, so I don't go all the way across the country. I just generally go at the most, uh, I don't know, maybe usually between 500 and 1500 kilometers, and uh, sometimes more, but not usually. So anyway, long story short, but I'd be dri I did a lot of night driving because, like I said before, I would always be going to meet a crane somewhere uh, first thing in the morning. So I'd have my high-value cargo. I'd drive through the night, get there properly when the crane's all set up uh, to get the load off. And uh, so I did a lot of this night driving. And you get the darn cars, people, they'll congregate. Like they all get together in a little pack and drive along there and they drive like they're in the city like so close together just waiting for somebody to have a little issue and it's all over they're, it's like pack racing in nascar <laughs> and uh it's just crazy i don't get it why why do that Just gonna crack that right window a little bit. Get rid of that drone. So anyway, uh, and uh, I think I mentioned this episode before. I'm not sure. But I wasn't driving for. Uh, I wasn't driving my truck. I was with the family, and when the kids were little, and we had a, a van, and. Uh, we were driving home from Winnipeg, and when the kids were little, we used to drive through the night. So I'd leave at like 8 in the evening, and it's a 13-hour uh, drive between Winnipeg and Calgary. So um, you get home in the next morning, and the kids are, you know, they sleep all night in the car. So it's pretty good. Anyway... I'm in the middle of Saskatchewan. It's like, I don't know, three or four in the morning. And uh, it's 110 kilometer an hour speed limit. So that's like 66 miles an hour or something like that. Oh, we can bypass the scale, good. So anyway, um, yeah, and Saskatchewan is, you know, it's pretty flat. It's the four lane, it's a Trans Canada Highway. And um, up ahead, you can see for miles, like you get over a little rise or whatever, and you can see five, six, ten miles ahead the lights at night. You can see cars or whatever. And from a long, from a long way away, I, I spotted some cars up ahead. And so I like to drive 120 kilometers an hour, like 10k over. Oh, look at this. So anyway, uh, I'm catching them slowly. And like, like I say, I saw them from a long, long way away. And finally, I catch up to them, and there's five cars. And they're all driving about, you know, they're four or five car lengths apart each. Like, nuts. Like, what the heck's with that? And uh, so I my 120 I got the cruise control on I go by the uh, first one go by the second one and then I can see the third one ahead at the lead of the pack is a cop car RCMP the Royal Canadian Mounted Police so I go oh crap you seen me can't come up here I'm not gonna sit in this little pack of dodos driving 110 right on the nose 
So I'm just gonna keep going. So I just keep doing my 120, I go right by them all. And uh, the guy lets me get about uh, a couple miles ahead and then he speeds up and pulls me over and says, you know what you're, how fast you're going? I say, yep. How fast are you going? 120. What's the speed limit here? 110. <laughs> he says, well, what's up? And I said, well, you guys are driving in a little pack of, of cars and three, four car lengths apart at 110 kilometers an hour. That's not safe, number one. And I'm not going to sit here and get involved in your accident. I'm not going not to go less. Not going to go less than the speed limit. And, uh, you know, I got a place. I'm going home. And, uh, and uh, he said, okay, well, listen, just slow it down a bit. And let me go. So that was uh, pretty funny. But, I mean, I hate that whenever, you know, cops get on the road and then the cars will follow them so tightly. Like, somebody should have been bold enough to go five Five, uh, five kilometers over. Man, I don't know what to do, right or left or Abilene doesn't sound right. Dallas? Oh, it's not saying to turn to Dallas, I better not. But anyway, that was an interesting little episode. And he had the good, uh, I guess his area that he was patrolling, because he can cover a lot of ground. And uh, after he pulled me over, he took the next uh, crossroad to get to a U-turn situation. And then I just promptly went right back up to 120. Keep left. Okay, we gotta be looking for signs for the airport now. Oh, there it is right there. Airport. <laughs> Keep right. After 50 yards, exit right ahead. Exit right ahead. <laughs> If the airport's on the left there, where the heck it is? That wasn't the best photo, but... Get a good photo of this thing in the, under the light. Get a lamp post in the way. Well, that's going to be. I guess that makes sense because they're holding the lights. Oh <laughs> uh, well. Let's see what we got to do here. Keep left. Left.
There's the Antonov over there. You see the nose tilted up. Oh man, that gate's going to be too slow for us. I think up here at this uh, airport we got to stop and push the button or something. Yeah, there's the uh, green goblin here. Just kind of cool instead of the thing just opening automatically. Turn left. To start security check, stop and press. Okay. Maybe get some decent night shot now. No. Nope. We're going to have to go around that way, but uh, we'll have to hit this trigger first. And this is... Oh, he's going to... What's he doing? Hey, oh, jeez. That's unusual to get traffic into a place you're going. That was kind of cool, actually. Uh, okay. What? No, that's not right. That's to pick up a job. I think i got to go that away. Oh, that's a first following another truck into uh, where you're offloading. That is pretty cool. Now, what's he doing? He's just going to stop right there. Okay, now I'm pretty sure we don't park in the uh, aircraft anymore. That seems to be a thing of the past, which is a bummer. Unless that's hard parking, I wonder. But anyway, we're probably going to put it in there beside it somewhere. Reached your destination. Okay. Oh, inside. Yay, us. All right. That's cool. I should put a B double in this once, as I think I mentioned before. I should do that again. Of course, it took me a while <laughs> to make a long video. Missed it by a little bit. How wide is that ramp? Oh, it's not that wide. I go get up here a little bit. Oh, get a little more firmly on that ramp. Want to get the front end off? Try to get the trailer back on that parking spot. Very cool. Well, that was fun. Good to do a night trip again. I. I really liked it in real life. Wow, look at the money. 47 grand. Very nice. Yeah, Ford Motor Company's, uh, well, Folgers and Ford are 
paying Jack Roush to pay us to do the job. Nice. Oh, man. So anyway, that's it, the LTL. So this uh, skin will be, should be out by the time you're watching the video. And I'll figure out where, um, I gotta get a hold of Polly again and see where you can pick up the skin. Uh, I'll try and get a link to that, but for now we'll just get the skin up on Steam. And uh, once again, it's a BPM modding uh, Ford LTL 9000 and the uh, Featherlight uh, NASCAR race car hauler. So uh, thanks for following along, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care. Catch you on the next one. And bye for now.